Hi, my name's Casey Ferris, and this is a video about Resolve, the computer program, and how to blur anything. See, look, blurry face. But it's not like that. You know that song about if you have a blurry face? It's not like that. It's different, probably. Here's how to blur anything. All right, so here I am in Resolve 17, and we have a couple clips here, some industrial things. These are from our friends over at raw.film. Awesome stock footage website, check them out in the description. And let's say we want to blur some of the faces of these warehouse workers. Maybe we wanna blur a couple signs, that kind of thing. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to blur all of that. So it's tempting if you want to blur something, because it kind of seems like, you know, one of the fancy compositing sort of things to do that in the Fusion page. And you can, you can blur things in the Fusion page, but I've got to tell you, if you're just doing like blurring things for a documentary, something like that, just trying to get rid of logos and faces and stuff, it's way easier to do in the color page. So let's switch over to the color page. I'll just click on color. And even if you're not super familiar with the color page, this should be pretty simple, I think. So I'm going to go to our first shot here. And let's say we want to blur this lady's face. I'm going to make sure that we don't see who she is. So in the color page, the first thing we're going to do is add a node that we can blur. So up here in the right hand corner, I'm going to right click on this node and go to add node, add serial. And this is going to be our blur node. I'll right click and say node label and we'll call this blur. So we know what we're doing. Now in the color page, down here in the color palettes, the fourth one from the right, this little teardrop thing, click on that. This is our blur palette. And this is actually how you blur and sharpen. And it looks like there's a bunch of controls, but really all you need to worry about is this radius control. And these are all locked together. So you can just push up the radius and it blurs things. If you take it down, then it sharpens things. So this is a great way to blur and sharpen stuff. Really, really easy. And the general workflow here is that we can blur everything in this node and we can use a window to limit what is blurred. So a window is kind of like a mask. It basically just says, all right, whatever's happening in this node, just do it inside of a shape. And so if we click on this little ellipse here and go over to the windows palette and I'll just click on this circle and that will add a circle window. And now I can grab this window and move it around and wherever this window is, that's what's blurred, right? And the cool thing about using a window is that you can track a window. Check this out. If I have this window on something like this and I go down to our tracker palette, which is to the right of our windows palette, I can hit this little play button and look what happens. It tracks the motion under the window and I can play it backwards, track it back the other way. And it does a really, really good job. It's pretty rare that you have any trouble with this tracker. It's really, really good. That's the general idea as you select something with the window like this and you go down to the tracker palette and you track it forwards and backwards and you track it all the way through. If I turn off my overlay here, you can see we have that sign blurred out, right? We can go back to our blur palette and I'm just gonna roll up with the scroll wheel until this is blurred to where you can't see it. And of course we could grab this window and soften that out a little bit so that it doesn't have that kind of harsh edge on it. And that's the cool thing too, is once you've tracked a window, you can adjust the size and even the position and the rotation and everything of it, and it will just move relative to the track. So if I move this off right here, it's gonna stay here, but it's going to kind of position itself based on that track. So that's really nice because if something goes off screen, you can just track something that moves the same and you can track it all the way off screen really, really easily. So we can leave that there. And now we have our blurry sign, but we weren't tracking the sign. We were tracking the face. So what I'll do is just grab this and let's try and track her face, shall we? In fact, I'm going to reset our window and let's just see what happens when we just put this right on her face and we track this. It does a pretty good job. It moves around a little bit. It's probably not the worst. And let's track it backwards. Pretty good, pretty good for the most part. So what we can do is make this a little bit bigger, soften it out a little. And there we have a blurred face. And we've done what we're supposed to do. Blurry face, totally works. So that's tracking a face. Let's get a little more detailed. So let's say that we don't like these logos, these hot, whatever it says, Jude, hi, Rick. We don't like that. We want to blur everything out that says that. Oh, there's three things that say that on this forklift. But we're gonna work a little faster, so I'm gonna give you some keyboard shortcuts. Let's say Alt S. That makes a new serial node up here in the nodes, and we'll call this Blur 1. And let's go kind of towards the middle. 
And let's start with this back logo here. And we'll just put a window around it. I won't even worry about blurring it right now. We're just gonna track it. Here's our window. And another shortcut is Control T to track forward and you can hit Alt T to track backwards. So let's hit Control T, see how we're doing. Oh baby. All right, so that was okay. I think what might be a little better is just to make this a little bigger because remember we can adjust this later and this tracker will actually kind of track the plane here. So it will kind of rotate this in 3D if we do this right. So I'll hit Control T. Yeah, see how it's actually kind of moving that in 3D space now. Very nice. That's like exactly, look at that silliness. What kind of freaking software tracks that way? You know what I'm saying? Anyway. I mean, come on. <laughs> We're spoiled, kids. That's what I'm saying. All right, so now that this is tracked nicely, let's just put this on here. We'll see how that stays. It's pretty good for the most part. But here's the cool part is that track does like most of the work for us, but we can actually refine this and kind of animate it throughout the shot. So right here, we want this to be right about here. Let's go ahead and add our blur. Maybe we'll soften this out a little bit. But if we go over to our tracker panel, right now, the mode that we're using is clip. And if we switch it to frame, what this will do is basically add a keyframe if we move stuff around. So I'm just gonna move this around a touch, make sure that's where we want it to be, go to the end, make sure that's where we want it to be. Kind of hard to tell, but something like that. Then we can kind of move to, you know, three quarters through our shot and adjust this to be just right. Same thing, one quarter into our shot, adjust this to be just right. And kind of go in between things and make sure that it's in exactly the right place. And this is a lot less work than keyframing it ourselves. And now let's play through this and see how it goes. Pretty well tracked, man. Man. I knew it was gonna do that and I'm still impressed. It's crazy. Yeah, so that's not really a problem. That's great. So yeah, if you do need to refine things, you can just switch to frame mode and move it around. One thing you generally wanna do before you do that is make sure that you have it 90% there on clip mode, because if you don't, then you're just gonna be doing a lot more work, okay? So let's do this again. I'll make another serial node. I'll hit Alt S and we'll call this blur two. And let's blur this little part here. Same thing, we'll grab a circle window. And again, I'm gonna track it a little bigger than we probably need to, hit Alt T and then Control T to track this. And then we're gonna fly over this, this should be horrible. Control T, yep, and then it loses the track as it goes off the screen. But check this out, this is what's really cool. Because it will still keep the relative movement, even if we're not tracking exactly what we wanna track, we can actually just move this up right here and just track this part. And there, we're done with the track, it's completely gone. But now, if we move this back down and adjust it, that kind of thing, then throughout this shot, it will still stay on that and it'll even go off screen. And by the time that we don't need it anymore, we can just kind of get rid of this. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's go through and make sure that the track is good first. So I'm going to just adjust this to be right around that logo and blur it a lot, something like that. We'll see how this looks throughout the shot. Looks good so far. Looks good, looks good, looks good. That's the nice thing about having a soft window with the blur is you have a lot of wiggle room. And that's about where it starts looking weird. But right about there, we don't need it anymore anyway. So we actually don't really need to go into the frames in our tracker, but what we can do is just kind of fade this node out. So the easiest way to do that is with the key palette. That's down here. It's the third one from the right, hit key. 
And key output gain, this is basically the strength of this node. So anything that we're doing in this color node, this is like the opacity of it, okay? And we're in corrector three. So what we can do is go over to corrector three here in our keyframes and click on this little automatic keyframe diamond right there. This is right where we want this to stop being around, right there. And then anything that we want to animate here, all we have to do is just kind of touch it. So I'll go here to key output gain and I'll just kind of wiggle that for a second. And that adds a keyframe right here. So now we can go back a little bit to where we want this to definitely be full, something like this maybe. And we can touch that gain again, make sure that's at one. So we have two keyframes now. The first is at one. And if we go to this next keyframe here, make sure I'm right on the frame, we can grab this key output gain and just push it all the way down. So that's just gonna fade this out. So now as we go back, we can see that blur just kind of fades out and isn't a thing anymore. So we have a blurry logo. We could probably move this over just a touch, make it a little wider. And then as we kind of go up, it just fades out. So let's see how that looks in the shot. There's our blurry logo. It's looking good. And it does come off just a little bit here. It's kind of a question of how much do you care? I mean, you can see that there's a logo a little more, but you can't read it. So you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. You can spend some more time messing with it if you want to. And then we're basically gonna do kind of the opposite here on this side. So let's do another serial node, right click, and we'll call this blur three. And same thing, we'll just grab like the whole side of this forklift like this, and I'll hit Alt T to track it backwards. And you notice I started that track when we can see that best. You don't want to start a track from here because it won't be able to grab onto anything very well. It'll be a bad track. All right, so that's gone. So for the most part, that looks pretty good. We'll start fading it out right there. Go over to our keyframes. I'll make sure to uncheck corrector three. I'll check corrector four. I'll go over to the key output gain. Here it's going to be zero. We'll move forward a couple frames and then we want it to be blurry there for sure. And maybe like here. And we'll take this gain and say one. And now if we blur this, blur the junk out of it and make our window just a little smaller. It does a really good job. There we go. Again, there's maybe a little bit of trouble there so we can push this down a touch. See how that goes. And then it just gets rid of it right there. So we might need to adjust this a little bit in the track. So we'll go over to the tracker and here we'll click to frame, move this over, go this way, move this up a little bit, move this up a touch. Yeah, looks good. So now we've tracked all of these logos and blurred them all on this forklift. Let's take a look at this beaut. See? Oh, we forgot this logo. Look at that. But you get the idea. Blur that the same way. Okay, we'll blur this logo too. You just make me so mad. Let's go. We're gonna do the same thing. Control T. All right, by that point, it's fine. Alt T, track it backwards. All right, and then we'll make this nice and blurry. See how that goes. Go over to our tracker and go to frame mode. This looks good here. We'll move this forward. And by this point, we're going to fade that out. So corrector five, let's take key output gain to zero. Then we'll come back a few frames and we'll call this one. Boop. Turn off our auto keyframe. Just adjust it a little bit, right? Pretty good. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, then we got to do this side, which is the same thing. New serial node. Track it backwards, and we'll just keep going until it's done. Looks good. Again, this is where we'll take our gain down, and we'll come back a couple frames. We'll turn it all the way up. Turn off our auto keyframe, and now let's turn up our blur. Make sure everything looks nice. 
switch to frame mode. This looks good right here. Then we'll move over a little bit because this needs to be changed just a touch. And there we have this side blurred as well. Look at that. Look at that blurriness. So good. Ain't nobody going to know who makes this forklift. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. See, told you. One of my favorite tricks is if, if you just have your hand up like this, right? And you go, we're number one, we're number one. But if you, then you blur it, it looks like you're saying something not very nice. I don't know, I'm a child. <laughs> here's, here's more videos on DaVinci Resolve right there. If you like DaVinci Resolve, then that's a good place to, to click on. Yeah. <laughs>